All from one family on stage. Their first gig, The Cars. It didn't go in that we could actually be meeting our producer or that this could be a major record year for us. If you feel the emotion in every song, you give across the emotion of the song. You have been a wonderful audience and we will remember this. We will be back. When you're put in a situation where you have to perform, where you have to deliver, no matter what, something happens. That's why we're doing it. We're doing it because we love it. Hi, I'm G. Mark Roswell. I was the music supervisor on The Commitments. I worked with the Coors on the early publishing demo tapes for three years, and you're listening to Coorscast. Hi, and welcome to episode 11 of Coorscast. In this episode, we speak with G. Mark Roswell. He was the musical director for the film The Commitments and worked alongside the band's manager, John Hughes, in helping to select the songs and bands needed for Alan Parker's now cult film. This is such an incredibly inspiring and interesting part of their story as a band. And it's so amazing to be able to connect with somebody that was at the very start of their career. As previous listeners are now accustomed, I began the interview by asking him of the events that led up to his career crossing paths with the cause, and ultimately the part he played in developing the band after securing a publishing deal with Polygram Music Publishing. Enjoy. I guess I should start by thanking you for agreeing to come on. Thank you for coming to to be on the Causecast and being a part of this project, which is a passion project of mine and has been for many years now. I've started most episodes by asking the guest their background, how they came to be in the position they were in and what they were doing up until the moment where they crossed paths with the cause. And so I guess that's my first question to you. Like, what what's your background prior to meeting with the with the band? Yeah, so um, I had been a music supervisor and I was hired by Alan Parker uh, and uh, Beacon Productions to come aboard and um, music supervise and get things ready uh, to actually film this amazing movie called The Commitments. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, and that was a a massive process where even before they started shooting, we needed to find the musicians that could be in the movie, the musicians that could play the music. We needed to run down all the songs in order for Alan to sign off on them. And at that time, there was no, you know, Spotify and Apple and uh, Tidal, et cetera. You had to make tapes and play it for him. And during that process, we had lots of open uh, auditions. And I first saw the cores at one of the open auditions. And obviously, Andrea Kaur was in the movie and played Robert Arkin's sister. Mm. And, um, but it was clear to me during that period uh, that um, the cores had, you know, just massive talent and it was kind of figuring out how to uh, deal with that. And the other thing is John Hughes was my fixer on the commitments. Mm. He was the one helping me put all the bands together. He was the one that found Andrew Strong's father, then Andrew Strong, because his father was out and Andrew Strong became an actor uh, in it because of that. Um, And so each day we were, uh, Alan would come back from all of the scouting And we would go into the rehearsal hall and would play down songs. And and during that point, we were trying different um, possible actors. And that's how Glenn Hansert got in there. That's how all of the actors that were in, that was all in that process. And that, and, you know, that includes, so for me personally, that was just an amazing time to be in Ireland in 1990 and a very unique time and all of it was uh, um, as difficult as it was. The other thing is that when I went to Ireland, 
having done a lot of music supervision, if you're doing hip hop, if you're doing pop, if you're going to a certain part of the world, a certain part of the country, and you're delving into something, you better make sure that you are showing the proper respect. So I went to Paul McGinnis, who managed uh, U2, and I said, which uh, ring do I kiss? <laughs> And, uh, and it just happened that they were off the road. So he gave me his assistant, uh, Joe O'Hurley, who runs all of the tech for U2. Mm -hmm. And Joe became my guy that could figure out all the playback, which was live vocal to playback, yeah, I had this. which, which uh, made that very unique. So during that period, I mean, obviously knew John very well. And he kept saying, yeah, Robert and Andrew, but the cores, man, the cores. So during that period, I, um, I uh, had made a deal for Beacon Productions with Polygram Music. And the whole deal there was we would do scores for all their films and we would, uh, and, and I would have a fund that I could sign artists. And the first artist I, you know, wanted to sign. Well, so there was the deal was you can have the soundtrack album, but I also want to sign these individual uh, artists. So um, the most amazing moment was the premiere for the commitments. And it was one of the great nights of all of time being in Dublin. You can imagine what, you know, that was like great party afterwards. And then that Saturday night, I went to meet with the cores, um, John Hughes, uh, Robert Arkins, um, and Andrew couldn't call. I don't know why, but we were signing, a you know, Andrew as well. But we were getting those two signed first, so it was really there to say, I want to, you know, we're going to sign you. Uh, we will develop you, and then um, it's, you know, it's a process but let's start on the process. Mm -hmm. And and then with the cores, it was, you know, and with Robert too, and it was a shame Robert didn't have the success that he should have because he played trumpet and did kind of Celtic rock. And it was just absolutely amazing. But- uh, it's a blend act again. It was Celtic hip hop rock. It was like nothing I had ever heard. And, and yet he could never quite pick the producer, never quite, he had the deal. He had everything. It just took too, too, too long. And uh, it just, it, it, um, with the cores, I probably worked with them three and a half years. And what I, and what I did was, and that's why this is interesting on the album was in those three and a half years, what I said was, okay, rather than getting a studio and doing that, since Jim could do the recording, everyone was there. I said, why don't you just start writing songs and just keep passing them to me and we'll work on them together. We'll figure out which ones. Mm. Um, it was the perfect time because it allowed us to tweak the songs, listen to the songs, make changes, work on the vocal arrangements. Mm -hmm. And so it just was an amazing process. Obviously, the reason I'm partial to that album was because um, those songs were all them figured out very organically. They worked on their vote. It wasn't necessarily all three of them singing. Wasn't So all those things, that, that was all their process. But it was clear yeah. after a while, the sound, we found the sound, the songs were there. And once we had those recordings, 
Um, I said to Beacon, well, you're not a label. We have to get it to a label. Yeah. So I knew Jason Flom and I knew Danny Goldberg, who was running it. And I, I said, guys, you got to hear this. You know, we'll make some sort of a deal with you as uh, on the uh, uh, production side. But obviously, it needs to go from here and you need to find a producer. And, and that's pretty much how it um, all happened. I, I've recently a number of weeks ago, uh, interviewed Jason Flom and it was, it was such a delight to know and, and just see his, how proud he was of the band and, and how from, from his little, little mo- moment that he had with them to saying, wow, what, what I can hear is, is so developed already as you, as you've laid a testament to and how, yes, we can't not sign you. This is, you know, um, and he, he showed me a copy of the tape, the polygram publishing tape that he was given the day that they went into his office. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, that's, a, that's, that's a really cool. Jason's a fantastic guy and a very talented person. Yeah. It was just amazing to see. And, and it was really surprising the songs that were on it as well. I, I had no idea that even that closer was worked on in a demo form, which obviously of course. Hit, hit the final album. And I was like, I had no, I had no knowledge of Closer prior to the album. I always assumed it would been had been developed in the studio, produced with David. But no, you know, one of those. No, David was a very fortunate producer. He all he needed to do was follow those arrangements. Uh-huh. And if you hear it, um, you know, there, there's a certain beauty in those uh, demos. Um, that because it was so organic and Jim did a great job and we kept adding equipment to, you know, make it as uh, good as it could be. And also John uh, Hughes had uh, been a um, musician in his own right. So everybody trusted him, Mm. Mm. you know, so he was able to work with them. And that was the other reason I knew that it was the perfect uh, timing. Yeah, I think John, John had enough knowledge of the industry he'd been there and and had moderate success in in lots of different avenues already so he was like the the father figure it was like right let's let's do this then and i think that gave them the creative freedom yeah you know not to take away you know obviously david his name and putting the spin on it and sure. getting it out there you know that's what he did but i was i was really look for me it's the creative process i enjoyed that creative process with them and john and john hughes was so helpful to me on the commitments mm-hmm. so the fact that we could sign the band he could work on the band and as he predicted that will be bigger than anything that you know, uh, they'll stick to it. I know what they can do. I can make it happen. And he delivered on all of that. Everything above and beyond while the yeah. stream is broken. Like, yeah. yeah. And also Craig, uh, Craig Kalman, who was at the label, he made sure that all of it, and he knew me from other work I had done. And so it just was the really right uh, fit and was very exciting for all of us to see such a massive, massive hit. And I remember they came out here when they were kind of working on uh, the album design and this and that, and we had a dinner and it was just so amazing where they were just that right at that moment of, of breaking. And then I saw them a number of years later when they had had the big success and my wife and I were in Cork and we went to a big uh, show and I saw them and it was just, wow. <laughs> but again, you know, that's what, that's the beauty of sort of what I do as a supervisor, always being able to find people early, mm-hmm. help them in their career, whether it's composers, whether it's artists, uh, songs, and uh, they were just a, a dream. And that, again, that mo- the moment for the commitments, the moment with all those kids, the moment with the cores, uh, just one of the highlights of my life. And that was in and that was in 1990 and 91. That's a long time ago. 91, like 32 years ago, right? Yeah. So there it is. Yeah. I had a very good friend that I introduced them to, who helped them with their kind of you know basic wardrobe and look, and and she was a really good pal of mine, and she helped them kind of find that first look album. Who was you know, that? Do you have a name? Uh, Judy Camion, who um, is a, actually a painter and a landscape, you know, mm-hmm. artist. And but she got to know them and kind of helped them 
and she had done a lot of that. So she kind of yeah. helped. Uh, oh, wonderful. You know, yeah. So yeah, because I've previously um, I've interviewed two different sets of photographers, which was amazing to to hear from sort of the other side of the camera's lens from what we've seen for thirty years of these images of this you know, yeah. youthful band for their first outing and it's here to hear how they worked from the other side and what they were trying to aim for in, in the look and everything it was just, the insights were amazing, really were. Yeah. Circling full back to producing demos with them and John, where was that done? Dundalk. They, yeah. they, oh no, I just said, you stay there. You work at your home studio. All, we'll build you the studio. And is this the top room bedroom in the gatehouse in Dundalk? Even yeah, even even Polygram didn't didn't. They were what you're going to just give this. You're going to. I I said, look, the deal I have, mm -hmm. I have X amount to spend, and I'm going to spend it like that. And that was the kind of deal I structured. So no, but I will say at that, that time, Lionel Conway who ran Polygram and Danny Holloway, who was there as an executive, they, they gave me full, they gave me that deal based on knowing sort of how I worked and yeah. what I could do and how I followed my convictions. Wow. And so obviously it worked out. And that deal also as a joint venture deal, we had a bunch of films and a bunch of songs from other films that they got as um, part of it. So they earned out and it was a, a big <laughs> success for them. Do you know, obviously you mentioned X amount. Do you, can you remember how much the deal was for their publishing deal? I can't remember exactly, you know, I'd have to go back, but it was a very, uh, uh, the both the publishing deal and the label deal was, uh, you know, of industry standards at uh, that time to, to make sure that the publishing deal it was important to me that they that they could develop the way I knew they needed to develop. And that doesn't always happen. And this is all from obviously John saying, yeah, you know, you should really look at the cause. But also you've already already heard them perform two songs uh, for rehearsals on commitments. Is that correct? Yeah, I forget something like that. Yeah, they did knock uh, on you know. wood. They definitely did. They definitely yeah, did. yeah, yeah, yeah. They did a few things, and they had played for Alan and everybody, so we knew what the course could do. And they that was apparent that they uh, that uh, they could handle it. There was, you know, and that you just knew that that group could write. And having John there to help, who understood it. Mm -hmm. That was also a very important factor, but it was clear that once they found the vocal sound and the writing and look, it may not, it could have been that I wasn't right. And you've given the money, the studio and the songs just aren't that good. And you're never going to go to that next uh, spot. deal obviously in part paid them to to have that time to develop how long would you say that lasted for that development phase before you got to a stage of maybe the demo videos that were produced i would say it was at least three years as i can remember yeah that's what it takes you know there was a lot of back and forth because didn't the album come out uh, when was the album released 95 yeah so there it is yeah. It was three years. And then they were signed uh, mid to late, kind of 94. And I think yeah. It, was, yeah, it was September 26, 95, it came out. So. Yeah, yeah. So that was exactly right. So Commitments was released in 91. Yeah. So between 90, 92 and 94, you know, 95, that was exactly right. Wow. I heard rumor that Bill Whelan had a hand in some of the early production orchestration. Is that true? Yeah. 
I think he did, yes, because he was well known, you know, in that world. And yeah, I remember we had talked to Bill about different things, not only on that album, but also stuff on the movie, even though the movie's soundtrack was all just songs. Sure. Do you have recollections with regard to individual tracks at all? I know it's been a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, I just knew that that slew of songs were all winners. That that, that, that that Like, if you listen to those songs, I was not going to do anything until we had all of those songs. And look, they had, there were lots of songs. I bet there were 25, 30 songs to come wow. up with. That. And on the commitments, we probably listened, Alan Parker probably listened to, yeah, a thousand songs to get just the songs that are on that album. So I was always one to make sure that the songs were there. And I was saying to them, you'll be happy that you've done all of this work because, you know, like Jason said, oh, well, this is fully developed. Normally, yeah. you you know, and, and I knew there wouldn't be just one or two things. Obviously, in the dreams and later things that really got them to that, you know, mega... Yeah you know, mega place that, you know, that's a whole other thing, but they were already touring and yeah. season, but even there, I, I always felt, and John knows that, that I thought the material could have been better on a lot of the albums, but what happens, they get so much, because that first album was so, you know, uh, just, you really, really want to make sure the songs were there. Mm -hmm. And there were, to me, um, you know, I just, that's just my own personal thing, but, but uh, that's why I love the first album so much because yeah. it was so, or so organically then, and I'm not saying that it is good to do a cover, obviously. Okay. But there were a lot, there were other covers or just, Hey, go back and let's hear some more songs. Exactly. And at that point, see when bands get that far, there's so much pressure on that next album and the producer and they have other projects. So it wasn't the same as us, us just kind of wood, wood shedding till it was right. Wow. That's the difference, man. Yeah. It, yeah. It all makes sense. It all, it all makes sense now, which is incredible. Glad to do it for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really cool that you're doing this because I think again, I was excited when you reached out because for people to understand how beautiful that process is, how beautiful it is for this young family where the commitments obviously was the basis for a lot of this and Alan Parker's amazing movie and people getting noticed. But the fact of the process of creating songs and making music getting those songs good enough and the sound of that good enough that would be taken by a major label and had that kind of success, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And the creative process is what is the most fun and the most important thing to me in all of those uh, things. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the detail I've been looking to drill down on. They had it. It was all yeah. there in, in the arrangements the little you know wisp of Celtic beauty you know just just all those things that they decided to put in it um that that really is all there there was no question that it was the moment to get that out yeah because it's something I already love but to find out that it was in a very real way made in a back bedroom and then within three years they're, well, they're working with the then world's biggest producer. And Jim's a co-producing credit on that album. Yeah, which he deserved uh, every, every bit of that credit because what he did. And again, they put in the work. If you put in the work and the songs are there, it's no different than what Quincy Jones or mm -hmm. Rick Rubin um, or, uh, you know, Robert Glasper or or uh, Terrence Martin or any of the the current produce you have to really really do the work if you want something that's going to uh, truly stand out. Again, the process of working with such amazingly beautiful talent, and again for me, it's all wrapped in that same cocoon. Mm. Like because even after the commitments, being able to work with the cores and Robert Arkins, and I was doing the same thing with Robert Arkins. He just couldn't pick, he couldn't pick the producers. We, I mean, 
I'm in New York with Robert Arkins. I'm meeting producers here and in New York. And I finally said, Robert, I was the music supervisor. I'm not your manager. You have all top manager. You have all top agents. You have the top hip hop producers. We had Hank, Hank Shockley. We had, I, I mean, at the time we had the most amazing hip hop producers, all of the, you know, Arthur Baker, I think that the, there were just the most amazing crew of uh, people, but Robert just couldn't quite go and in that time though it was still working with him on all the basic tracks and his his first first album like the cores that first those first demo tapes with his group called house broken were unbelievable like the cores and if and if he'd been able to do it and i saw him a number of years after dublin and we you know we were at uh you know, in a bar and talking about it. And I said, you know, it's don't feel badly, man. This is a long story that this is a story that goes on and on. It's art imitating life, life imitating art. It's look, you all you guys were flushed in the limelight. Next thing you know, you're in New York at openings and, you know, everyone wants you and you're, you know, a hot actor and a hot this and a hot that and you have a huge record deal. Don't worry about it. It just is part of it all. So, uh, I really want to ask you about their first gig at the waterfront. Well, that was also amazing. The thing about that is all of the bands played. Robert played, and, oh, and I never knew that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Robert played, and uh, um, there were three or four different bands that played, and the chorus just yeah. So that that night at the waterfront was just one of the all time best nights ever you know because again remember after the screening and then it's summertime so you know you have the the light is still to 10 to 10 30 11 o'clock yeah. and so you're out on the iffy liffy and um right on the waterfront i remember we're all out and then we're going in and listening to all that and all, all of those incredible bands uh, it was just one of those rare moments. And also I had a time where I was with the whole cast and, and you know, including Andrea and everybody um, at, the, uh, at, the, uh, at the waterfront where we're all just, and I'm looking at it all just thinking, wow, this is just so amazing that this all going on the movie and yeah. the idea that they'll all have, you know, recording careers and the sync can work and and yet you're in Ireland and it's just in the most beautiful moment in Ireland and uh, uh, just magic all of the way around truly. So I think of the cores in that cocoon of uh, an incredible gift to me to be able to work with Alan Parker and work with all the incredible you know Ian Lafrenet and and Clement and the guys that wrote it and Roddy Doyle and that whole thing that then spawned the course. Magic. It's a well, it was total magic. Total, total magic. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on. It's sure, really been such a pleasure to to hear you that insight of, of those first first days and that first publishing deal to to develop the the songs. Um, just been so so amazing. Thank you so much. Cool, man. I hope that gives you a good uh, bit of stuff. Another huge thanks goes out to G. Mark Roswell for his willingness to spend time and discuss this part of his career with the band and how he aided them in the development of those first demos. I was able to catch up with him briefly a few weeks after recording this interview and after some research he dug out his records and found that each of the acts he was able to secure a publishing deal for with Polygram were given $100,000. This in part secured the equipment needed to create those demos in Dundalk, including the DAT recorder used to create the final demos for distribution to try and get that all-elusive record deal. And that's how we were able to listen to those demos all these years later. If you have comments or questions regarding this episode or previous, you can connect with CauseCast on social media via Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, as well as the newly created Discord, all with the handle at CauseCast. Links to all can be found in the show notes for this episode, as well as at CauseCast.com. 
please subscribe and review using the podcast platform of your choice. And if you're listening via YouTube, I'd be grateful if you'd both like and subscribe. Feel free to use the comments section there to discuss the episode with others. As always, thank you for listening. You've been listening to CauseCast. <laughs>